Kimberly's like, I'm a reporter. (laughs) I will find out. (laughs) There's a real good chance that depending on who you work for, I'm going to be able to figure out or infer a great deal about your salary. I probably know somebody who knows somebody who knows how much money you make, and I'll figure it out. Hey, y'all. I'm Rima Khreis, and I'm a host. Oh, my God. You got this. (laughs) And you've got a cat. Can I do it with the cat? Yes, I am 100% in favor of doing it with the cat. <laughs> Maybe Jasper will come by. Hey, y'all. I'm Rima Reyes, and I'm the host of Marketplace's podcast, This is Uncomfortable. And we have a video series that we're doing where I ask people uncomfortable questions. And our guest today is our very own Kimberly Adams. Hey, Kimberly. Hi. Hey. Dude, I feel like it's been so long since we've been in the same space together. Like oh, virtually. my gosh. So Even virtually, hard. yeah. I know, right? Not much I overlap like anymore. You. It makes me sad. But it's we have to have sad. Zoom cocktails. Yeah, we haven't done that. We need to do that. Yeah. Um, but I'm very excited to chat with you about uncomfortable money stuff. Are you are you feeling good? Are you feeling ready? Uh, a little bit nervous, but I'm I'm here for it. I'm here okay. for it. You'll be great. You'll be great. You're just bearing your um your soul. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> All right. So my first question for you is, has money ever hurt a relationship for you? Yes. 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 We had a huge family blow up actually over money and inheritance after Mm -hmm. my um, father died and then another one uh, with my siblings. And it was a huge, huge fight. And honestly, there's probably still some bad feelings in various parts of the family. Yeah. How long ago was this? A um, couple of years ago, um, let's see, my dad died in 2007. So there was some stuff around that. And then the other big dust up, I guess, happened, I want to say like three or four years ago. And but, to the extent, you know, yeah. Hmm. I was going to say to the extent you feel comfortable sharing. I don't, I don't want to push you, but um, what, what were some of like the holdups or conversations? Well, it was about sort of how... Hmm, this is uncomfortable. Well, <laughs> it's about it, it was about sort of what it means to have a legacy and who gets to decide what somebody's legacy is. Hmm. And then when life changes, what about somebody's decisions and plans should change and who should have a say? And I think that I know that's super vague, but I'm also not going to put like all my family's business out there, but I think that's kind of expansive to money and families in general, like who gets to make what decisions, who gets to decide who should even have a say. And at what point does one person get to have influence over the financial priorities of another and who else gets to weigh in on that and all of those things mixed together with sibling rivalries, with who's family somebody's drama. favorite and family drama and gossiping aunts and uncles. And it just all becomes like this mess and yeah. it gets real uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 That makes a lot of sense. Um, mm-hmm. Were, again, to the extent you feel comfortable sharing, were there wills involved? Uh, yes, there were. There, there were. were and it was and still messy. Still messy. Still yeah. messy. So get your stuff together, folks. Yeah. Oh, this is uncomfortable. Have you prepared a will? No, I haven't. I need to. I need to because um, I I, I don't have any kids, but I do have nieces and nephews and friends who want like various stuff. They've like, like I have a friend back in Egypt who specifically wants this piece of artwork if something (laughs) ever happens to me. (laughs) And and I'm like, you can totally have it. So I need to like write that down somewhere. Um, So morbid. But she was with me when when I bought it. So like, you know, all those things like matter. It's not necessarily, I don't think it's morbid. I think that there's, again, it kind of ties back into legacy. So One uncomfortable thing that I did was I have this um, letter that my dad bought at auction. That's actually someone's um, free papers and a formerly enslaved person's free papers. Mm -hmm. And it had been quasi gifted to somebody else in the family. But then after my dad died, I kind of reclaimed it. Awkward. (laughs) But Uh, was that person reluctant to give it to you? uh, I didn't hear that they were. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, I don't know who that person was, but it seems like something that you should be able to claim. 
Yes. Oof. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't realize we were gonna go so deep so quickly. <laughs> um. I mean, I guess I could say that, like, oh no, I spent too much money on a gift for an ex in high school. <laughs> yeah, I feel like any gift. I guess that's a more normal, <laughs> more normal response. But you know, well, these are no, real things fine. that happen. And yeah. also, everyone in my family knows I'm a journalist, so I, at any point, reserve the right to put all their stuff on blast. Know, right? Um, what was the gift in high school? Oh, um. <laughs> What was it? I think it was like an expensive jacket or something like that. I've I've suppressed the memory and just like dismissed, <laughs> dismissed. <laughs> uh, um, well, that leads to my next question. So, what is what is something expensive that you've bought that you regret? Oh, this is embarrassing. I bought a timeshare. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> which, which factors into your latest season. <laughs> okay. When was this? I need to know. <laughs> I bought it in 2018, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2018. And it's funny because I use it all the time. Okay. And great. like I've gotten value from it. But then when I wanted to go and buy a house, I was looking at how much money I put into that timeshare and it would have made a significant difference when I needed to get money together for a down payment. Yeah. And I was like, well, that, that wasn't a wise use of resources, but well, we're, still we're on it? vacations. Uh, it's one of these points things. So you can use the points kind of wherever. Oh, okay. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Unless you a global anything? pandemic and you know okay, maybe you can't go anywhere. Not, right? But eventually it'll be nice. Um did did you end up buying a house? This is it. Oh wow. I'm in it. Wow. Yes, I did. I did. I'm Delicious. very thank you. I'm very fortunate because I feel like the only reason anybody our age, like even though you're younger than me, anyone close to our age like buys a house is because you don't have any student loan debt. Mm -hmm. And my parents were very emphatic about not having me take out student loans for college. They said, if you get scholarships, you can go to school anywhere you want in the world and we'll support you and and help you out. If you don't, we will pay to send you to any community college in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And like many teenagers, I wanted to get out of the house. And so incentive for grades worked and, and got scholarships. I worked in school and unlike many of our peers, I don't have student loan debt. And that's made a huge difference yeah. in my, you know, finances it's throughout my adult life. Difference. I mean, I, I, I agree. Most people are not in that position. I'm actually in a similar position as you, um, or like I had the same story where my parents, um, didn't come from much like they immigrated to North Carolina from Palestine. And my dad's a nurse. My mom, um, didn't have a job. She just, uh, she raised us, <laughs> which is a job in of itself. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, they, my dad just like, I think it was just assumed that they were going to pay for college. Like, I think um, he wanted to be able to offer that, like, you know, give us that opportunity. Um, but it was the same deal where he was like, if you can get scholarships, great. Um, otherwise, we'll pay for everything else. And so I got like half scholarships and he paid for the other half. But yeah, it's not a position that most people are in. Yeah. Um, and I feel a little weird about it. Mm. But- <laughs> I think there's all sorts of different kinds of privilege that float around in this economy. And, you know, my dad started off like shining shoes when he was a kid and worked his whole life. And I think that my mother worked all the time as well. And the fact that they did work so hard, like your parents worked hard was like to create a better life for their kids. So we should like, live those better lives that they wanted for us, but also like recognize that privilege and then hopefully pay it forward to, to others who aren't so fortunate. Yeah, no, totally. Um, my next question for you is, so I have a question here and it's, have you ever successfully negotiated a pay raise? I know that you have <laughs> plenty of times. <laughs> You're like my go-to person. In fact, when I'm trying to negotiate a pay raise, um, I've like, yeah, you know, I've consulted you multiple times, I'm sure, um, mm-hmm. because you are incredibly wise when it comes to this topic, uh, like just negotiation and career advancement. So maybe my question for you is going to be, if you could give 
folks one piece of advice on how to negotiate, what would it be? Hmm. Know where everybody stands. Oh, interesting. Know where you stand relative to your competition and your importance in the organization and how desperate the other side is uh, or, or not desperate. I mean, knowing the stakes and, and what the actual playing field is, is key to whether you have leverage to negotiate or whether you're in a position just to kind of take whatever is given. And that depends on how badly do you need a job or how great has your work been to justify a raise? Um, how many uh, people are gunning for your job? All of yeah. these things matter uh, when you're negotiating. So I think have as much information as you can to make your case. Yeah. The other thing is I would, and, and I've told you this, is have secondary responses to a no. So if you ask for one thing and someone says no, make sure you have a backup thing to ask for the, until you can get to a yes. Mm. Even if those are smaller things, if you can't get more money, ask for more vacation. If you can't get more vacation, ask for a signing bonus. If you can't get a yeah. signing bonus, ask for flexible work schedules. Oh, and, and there's my cat. Hey, <laughs> what a beauty. <laughs> yeah. That's great, succinct advice. I, I think what you said first is huge, like knowing where you even stand in the company. Uh, we did this one episode where I like think about it all the time. The woman who I interviewed, she was trying to figure out how much she made relative to one of her employees, um, one of her coworkers rather. And uh, he wouldn't tell her. And so she was like, listen, because that's the thing, right? Like you could ask people and they just don't want to share, right? Mm -hmm. And so she was like, listen, why don't you just tell me if it's over or under this? I'm going to give you a number. You tell me, is it over or under? Um, which is like such a smart way to do it too, I think, because um, like you will find yourself in a position sometimes where you just like can't find that information. And I think finding creative ways to go about it is, is key. I, don't know, I guess I'd rather us normalize being open about salary and, well, that and pay. Too. <laughs> yes. because, but then what know, do you do if someone is just like, I'm not trying to tell you, you know? Well, I mean, it depends on who they are. If they work for the federal government, I'll look it up online. If they work for a nonprofit, I'm going to look at their 990. And Kimberly's like, I'm up. a reporter. <laughs> I will find out. <laughs> There's a real good chance that depending on who you work for, I'm going to be able to figure out or infer a great deal about your salary. That I probably true. know somebody who knows somebody who knows who, how much you, money you make, and I'll figure it out. But <laughs> if you're not going to be a nosy reporter type, I mean, there are a lot of signals in people's lives to at least superficially mm. gauge, yeah. you know, things. So there's that. Yeah. But also there's a lot of people in debt too. So who knows? What's something cheap that you own that just like gives you so much joy? My Whirly Pop popcorn popper. It's Ooh, this, that's fun. Yeah, it's this metal... Um, tub that you put on the stove to make popcorn and it's got a hand crank on it and Ooh. so I never make microwave popcorn I always make my popcorn on the stove and I eat copious amounts of popcorn and usually with old bay seasoning on it and mm -hmm. it cost me maybe 25 bucks probably six or seven years ago yeah. and I use it several times a week and Aww. I love it's, that so it's awesome. nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm my uncle's now. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, I have one other thing that mm -hmm. I just bought that brings me great joy. Can I? Yeah. I just got this little hair barrette on Etsy. It's a like raven. Oh, that's cute. It's oh, like wow. a little hairpin. That's like a statement. Yeah. And I feed the crows in my neighborhood, probably much to my neighbor's chagrin. And so we'll be the little bird. Oh, that's nice. I like that. I like it too. <laughs> um, so a big theme that we're exploring this season on This Is Uncomfortable is scams. So I'm curious, have you ever been scammed? Um, yes, for sure. What was this thing that happened the other day where I was like, oh, that was a scam. the other day. <laughs> No, this was, this was recent. It was, um, oh, 
I ordered something online. Okay. I ordered these flower pots and I was like, these are going to be perfect. These are going to be great. And they showed up and they were like this big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, I hear about that stuff, kind of like that kind of stuff happening. <laughs> that yeah. that actually happened to you. Yeah. And, I, and you know, the measurements were on the description but like way way down and (laughs) the pictures had these like big giant plants in them but what actually came was just like you can barely put like a little air plant in it and I was just like I see you you got me and I definitely got charged full-size plant Mm -hmm. pot prices do you think it's like an intentional scam or it's like one of those things that you know you just text it's a yeah I think it was intentional and I was just like I see you lesson learned I need to just be more yeah, careful look at the dimensions. And, yeah look Me. at those dimensions but it was like the pictures had these like big beautiful plant inside of it and it got around I don't like that <laughs> I was like I see Damn. you I see you but yeah uh I'm sure I've been scammed a million times over I know right and just don't even know about it I ended an interview once with someone who said the best scams especially uh, from corporations, it's not that you still steal a hundred or a thousand dollars from people is that you slap a 15 cent fee on a million people that doesn't belong there. And that just racks up over time. And so all of us are probably we all getting scammed. We're all, all the time scammed, basically, as you've been saying. But think about it. Like, yeah, look well, at all these extra fees on your delivery service, on your bills. I remember I was getting charged by my phone company for um, my, it was like some sort of um, fee that you're supposed to pay when you have cable. But I didn't have cable. I just had mm-hmm. internet. And I was paying this little $2 fee for months and months and months and oh my god don't even get me started eventually I like with the company I know I feel like there's so many I'm such an idiot but like I feel like there's so many fees that uh I've incurred over the years and I just like haven't that you didn't notice or like I have noticed some of them but it takes me way longer than it should to cancel the subscription or whatever it is yeah and it's a it's a type of scam if there's a fee that you know a company is putting on all of its customers that doesn't have to be there and they rely on us not noticing or not paying attention or not complaining to you know get it and that's just like making it really hard to cancel something or unsubscribe from something oh my god Mm -hmm. yeah it's not great my next question for you is so if you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of financial advice what would it be work less. That's a great piece of advice. I think I would tell my younger self that too. Yeah. I was so focused on working and making money and advancing my career, which, you know, I'm here paid off, but I missed a lot of stuff. Hmm. And my dad gave me a very good piece of financial advice. He said, your most valuable asset is your time. You can always make more money, but you can never make any more time. And even though I heard him say that, I think so many, especially when people are sort of kind of upwardly mobile, trying to do the class socioeconomic stepping stones, you get so focused on school and on work and on doing all these things that you have to do to advance that you can kind of leave some important stuff behind. So I would probably work less. I really like that. Do you find yourself working less these days? No, not at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I should have worked less then. I need to be working more now because I mean, the return on investment for, you know, 20 year old Kimberly mm-hmm. working 15, 16, 18 hour days is a little bit less than the return on investment of <coughs> year old Kimberly working 15, 16, 17 hour days. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. It's hard though, especially when you're young, you almost feel like 
it, you have to do that, right? It's like part of paying your dues. And um, for a long time, I also really conflated working long hours as being successful. It's like, oh, this product will not be good or I will not be successful or people won't be proud of me or whatever, unless I like pull an all-nighter or unless I stay at the office late. And I don't think that's true as much anymore, as much as I used to think that. Well, and there's also the cultural uh, connotation, connotations around it, like this phrase of paying your dues. Mm -hmm. What does that even mean? And who does it apply to? Because right. not everybody has to do that. Only some of us do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also a workplace culture component of normalizing working reasonable hours and taking time for mental health care and downtime and avoiding burnout. And I would love to see a world in which we don't make young people kill themselves just to, excuse me, that we don't make young people really burn themselves out for the basic stepping stones of a career. Mm -hmm. And, you know, knock on wood, that will happen. Yep. I a hundred percent agree with that. All right. Well, this was a lot of fun. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, maybe we can do a part two soon. Yeah, <laughs> you hopefully in person. Oh, that would be nice. That would be nice. Please come out to LA. I'll come out to DC soon too. Sounds excellent. Yay. All right. Thanks, Kimberly. Bye. Bye.